Very good evening to you. It's kind of author's night here on Sheffield Live TV. And by the way, one or two do ask, is it a live show? It is. It's absolutely live on Sheffield Live every Thursday evening, an hour or thereabouts of sporting chat. We've got a perfectly balanced sofa, I think, this evening. Last week it was very heavily loaded. In fact, the sofa kind of tipped up like this in favour of uh, Sheffield Wednesday. So we've had to do something about that by bringing in a heavyweight blade this evening. Uh, in every sense, my colleague uh, from the Sheffield Star. Sorry about that, Danny. I couldn't Stop resist. Saying. It's the fish and chips you've just had at Whitby yes, uh, yeah. on your engagement break. Danny Hall from the uh, Sheffield Star, who's going to be the author of a new book, which I'm sure every Blades fan will rush out and buy. It's on the Wilder Revolution at Bramall Lane. And my other esteemed guest this evening is Daniel Gordon, author and documentary maker of the Hillsborough documentary, the BAFTA award-winning Hillsborough documentary fame. Daniel Gordon, okay. a lifelong uh, Sheffield yeah. Wednesday supporter. And so I say we've got a perfectly balanced sofa this evening. But I'm so impressed, first of all, Danny, but we're going to talk about your, your book and, yeah. uh, and the, the fantastic photos that you're being sent by Blades fans that will go into it. But you, I, I wish I got an award to present to you tonight because <laughs> I've never before had a man in the studio who's missing his engagement party or part <laughs> of it in order to be here. You did yeah. say, you know, I might have to slip off early, but mm. you didn't tell me why. Delaying the drinks is the important thing, not missing it. <laughs> not missing it. Just in it. case the missus is watching somewhere, but yeah, just slightly delaying them. But it's a, you know, it's a small price to pay to be here with you, Bigsy. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, I'm, I'm absolutely honoured. Uh, it, it's, it's fantastic that we should do that. Hey, by the way, we, we've not been invited, but that's no, we haven't story. actually. We we've haven't. not. <laughs> uh, Daniel Gordon, I'm impressed as well because. You went to Bramall Lane this week, and didn't you? Yeah, Do you quite, be honest about uh, it. I'll be honest. <laughs> I did go to watch England, um, and I, but I was uh, yeah. We got tickets on the on the cot, and that's quite an uncomfortable experience all around. Was it? Yeah. yeah I mean, no one was quite as uh, as poisonous as uh, in January when I was last there. Uh, and I've only been to Bramall Lane twice in my whole life to not watch a Wednesday game. They're both England under 21s. Yeah. And one was uh, this week, and one was in 1984 when England won the Euros under 21s. Yes. So it's a really strange. I mean, I. It's funny, you know, when I drive past the ground, I don't look at it. I just refuse. Even when I go down um, opposite John Street and I have to look that way for traffic, I don't, yeah, really, you're, I you're don't just, really look. I just sort of go that way. He's jesting, isn't he? Yeah. He's you're not, he's not I tell you. <laughs> he's a one-eyed no. film producer, folks. Yeah, yeah, a yeah, very yeah. one-eyed film I can't, producer. I just can't look at the ground. It's, it's because yeah. there, was, there was no nil nil victory to cheer this time. Exactly. Are you like that with Hillsborough? <laughs> I mean, you cover well, games I, at Hillsborough occasionally. Yeah, you're not like that, are you? I, I grew up five minutes from Hillsborough, so, right. <laughs> so technically, you know, if I, if I avoided looking at that, then <laughs> yeah. I'd live a yeah. very one-eyed life. Yeah. So, you know, some people can kind of look look past that, you know, others obviously can't. Some people are big enough, aren't they? <laughs> hey, well, yeah. yeah. And as your introduction of me, <laughs> so the heavyweight, yeah. Awesome. Then, no, yeah. I did tell you, it, it, this is also the man who, celebrated, who pro well, proposed, I presume, you got engaged mm -hmm. in Whitby mm -hmm. and celebrated at, uh, at the, well, as only you can at the Magpie. As, yeah, the only way you can do, yeah, yeah, the Magpie Fish and Chips. And that was good enough for the future Mrs Hall, was it? Well, yeah, you know. More she, than good enough. She's got it good. Yeah. <laughs> Were you at the England Under-21 in South I was, well? yeah, yeah, I was, yeah. It was a slightly yeah. strange atmosphere with, you know, packed with the kids and the yeah, horns yeah, and the, 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 the screaming, but yeah. uh, it's, it's just a interesting. different vibe, isn't it? It is, yeah. screaming going down. To Especially I mean, with the, But it was brilliant. The, um, I mean, I don't know whose policy it was, but we got tickets for £5 for an adult and two fifty. Who are either in primary school or attached to a yeah. junior football club, yeah. and it was brilliant. And for brilliant them to, to be able to go to, to go that close to a football game, that decent footballers, good, you know, they, they were skillful. Yeah. And mm. just for them, and, and I, I manage a, a girls' team, and uh, and for them all, pretty much to go and watch a football game and, and be that involved and that close. Um, and you know, one thing I really hate about United is they do things a lot better than um, than our team and our club in that respect, in the community yeah. respect. And they were brilliant. Okay. Um, although I was very uncomfortable. That's being clipped that up end. as we, as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> that little clip yeah. there. No, well, I, 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 that's on fans' website. So that is. It, it can do, to be honest, because until you know, until Wednesday actually turn that around, um, mm. you know, they, they'll always be sort of behind in uh, in the community. You know, again, our, in our experience, our girls go. My team, in spite of them all being Wednesday fans, they end up at United, um, you know, training days at, you know, during the school holidays. Yeah. It's something that Wednesday just, for whatever reason, don't do as well. It's, it's a just good a, a good question, night. Isn't it? <laughs> a good night for Sheffield, really. I think uh, my colleague James Shield did a really good piece on it. That yeah. it's, it wasn't about United on Wednesday yeah, night. Absolutely. You know, it yeah. was about the FA kind of seeing Sheffield again 
as a place yeah. that you know you should be bringing yeah. these games to. Indeed, you know, you look at the, yeah. the senior right. team going to going to Ellen Road, and you think you know how close were United Wednesday yeah. to that? Yeah, absolutely. You know, this might have got them that one one yeah. step closer. Hopefully, it's one of the things actually. I've been to watch England quite a few times uh, in tournaments and. You know, the, the great thing about England, you get the flags absolutely everywhere and you start looking for all the different clubs. <laughs> and the amount they've got, the St George's Cross with just Sheffield and the two badges, mm -hmm. there's quite a few that obviously team up to go and watch England together. And it's yeah. something that does unite the city. It's the, probably the one thing. Yeah. Apart from Derry Dooley that was able to yeah. unite the city. Something's got to be right. Yeah. We've got loads of ground to cover. James Craig will join us later. Of course, we, no show is on sport is complete without reference to cricket and Australia and reverse swing and all the, all the ball tampering and all that goes with it. Well, in part two, we'll be discussing that. Uh, we've also got a busy football weekend to look forward to for both the Sheffield Club's games on Friday and Monday. Can't believe the weather forecast for Monday. <laughs> Bramall Lane uh, staged a game in a blizzard uh, just recently. It could be staging another one in a blizzard, when, according to the forecast anyway, when Cardiff come on Monday. Daniel, um, as I said, author and doc documentary make a couple of books that uh, you need to be an author in it. In, if you're not an author, in, uh, you can't get into the studio tonight. <laughs> I'll bore you with the books I've written a bit later. But uh, in 1995, uh, Daniel had um, a book out on, on, on the hours. It was a, court, a quarter, quarter of Wednesday, Wednesday which, yeah. you know, 25 years, which uh, you know, said what it did on the tin, or <laughs> did what it said on the tin. And then in 1999, Blue and White Wizards, which was a 20-year sort of story, two de decades told by the personalities of the day. Um, but you've also done a World Cup film on, North, and I, I'm old enough to remember this, North Korea, uh, Korea um, against uh, Portugal mm. in 1966. You did a fantastic yeah. film on that. And the Hillsborough documentary, which people are still talking about two years ago now, yes, I'm astonished years, to yeah. see, 2016. I'm, I'm guessing that, that probably ch changed your life in many ways. I mean, you, you run a production company, yeah. um, and the impact of that, are you still feeling... Uh, yeah, I mean, on, yeah, on, in terms of benefits, yes. Um, mm. From Because they won a BAFTA a year, just under a year ago, and they actually won two BAFTAs for the production. And from then on, yeah, the, the, the sort of the floodgates open in terms of, of what that can do for you professionally. Yeah. Um, in terms of what it, it takes out of you to make, a film like that, mm. I didn't quite factor that in, uh, in terms of sort of looking at footage day in, day out, and, and sort of that, what that does. I, I was actually warned by, um, I had a meeting not far from here actually with, with South Yorkshire Police just before I started to let them know that this is what I was doing and, and they knew what mm. the implications meant and I wanted um, policemen to come forward and, and sort of cooperate with the documentary. And the woman that ran the archives at South Yorkshire Police just said, be careful because Hills will get to you. And I didn't quite understand what she meant, but sort of five years after that, I fully understood. You lived exactly. with it for five years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it, and, and, and having that, that trust of families and survivors and interviewing people and seeing mm. the impact that Hillsborough had on them, wherever they were, whether they were survivors or, or fans or, you know, families or policemen or whoever, you know, officials. Um, and it had a huge impact. And then watching the film and then having to watch the film with families as well and showing them and making sure mm. everyone was okay with it and sort of pre-warning people before it went out and, and knowing that it would have a huge impact on the night when it went out. Um, yeah, that was sort of pressure. I didn't quite understand. It's nothing compared to what the families have been no. through for now in the, what, 29 years. But, but even so, the, your experience is so, uh, for an hour, you, you can't watch that film mm. with a dry eye. No. It has an incredible, you, you imagine, oh, this is gonna be emotional, but you don't realize quite the depth to it until you watch it, but that's yeah. only an hour for us. I mean, you must you must have felt the same as me, Danny. Absolutely, yeah. Watched the, it. the thing that struck me was how, you know, obviously that was a really extreme example, but how obviously Hillsborough was before I was born. So I've only known mm. kind of all city yeah. stadiums and kind of like the kind of sanitized football day out, whereas, you know, only 15 years earlier or whatever, it was really different yeah. week in, week out. You know, obviously that was a really extreme example, but kind of how, you know, football fans were looked at and kind of how you know, they were just kind of left to, you know, go, mm. I say enjoy the day, but kind of yeah. in a very, very different way to how cattle, really. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and anyone, yeah. That watched, anyone that watched football in that era, and I went home and away to watch Wednesday, and, and I can name a half a dozen immediately mm. of those incidents where we've all since gone, oh, that was close. Mm. Um, uh, the thing about um, Hillsborough from a Wednesday fan's point of view was it wasn't our end. So very few fans, I mean, no Wednesday fans ever knew what it was like to yeah. be at Hillsborough because we were never at a semi-final for yeah. obvious reasons, not just the quality on the pitch, but the fact that we were in as neutral ground and that's an away end. 
So I think one of the things that a lot of Wednesday fans couldn't quite get their heads around was that that was a death trap. Um, and the club needed to, to look at what, what was wrong with the ground at that end. And, and uh, you know, I, I, again, I couldn't understand why Wednesday fans couldn't understand that it could have been us. Uh, yeah. At any other yeah. ground, it could have been us. Hillsborough had specific issues at that end. Yeah. But, you know, we used to take thousands to, to away games and, yeah. and, you know, we, we'd have problems at yeah. loads of grounds. But those crowd surges and ripples used to be considered perversely as part of the spectacle yeah, of the game you know look yeah. at that look at that isn't yeah. that the emotion of football yeah. and of course it came to be seen now in a totally different light yeah because it's and dangerous think, although we thought absolutely. it was fun yeah. and, and it was yeah. it was brilliant to be and there was no greater feeling than when you scored yeah. and an absolutely packed end yeah. and the crowd went absolutely wild and, and you see it now you know you see it on the youtube clips yeah. and to, yeah. to have been part of some of those occasions was amazing. You'd end up also, in a different place on oh, the completely. terraces from yeah, where you yeah, started. Yeah, yeah, you're about 20, 30 yards you away. What have I got here? Um, <laughs> and, and it was brilliant. And, you know, and perversely as well, when, you know, when we, I, mean, I remember Wednesday scoring at Old Trafford, I remember beating Man United at Old Trafford and climbing up on the fences. Mm. And, and, you know, celebrating Ray Verardi's like, really, like 84th minute winner. Mm. And, and going absolutely nuts at Old Trafford. Mm. And then having police sort of get the truncheons out and sort of beat, try and beat mm. you down and stuff. And it was all part of what you thought was the fun. I've, I've been in a smaller crowd at Chesterfield being the team I supported. I remember in 1967, there were 10,000 there, but one end was packed. I got trapped against, uh, I was quite young, you know, I got, I got trapped against a, uh, a um, crash barrier, yeah. crash mm. barrier on my chest. Mm. And uh, I was mightily relieved when the pre they, they'd scored mm. and the crowd came forward. Mm. And you couldn't shout cry or anything it was just a yeah. you know so I, I, that was a small experience that enabled me to understand yeah. that but I was interested as well from the point of view of people like Danny and myself we watched it the once and that hour you know was such a graphic hour and you you know I was going to ask you whether you felt the same as we did watching it having worked on it mm. but clearly you felt like that over and over and over and over yeah, and it doesn't, I mean, get, it doesn't get less with the viewing. I, I still, no. I, I mean, there's, there's, six, there's six parts in the film where I, I will cry. Um, and you just can't help it. Because mm, you're yeah. either emotional because you know the people, or you're emotional yeah. because that, that triggers something in you. Um, because and, and we're most, all football fans, and it yeah, could Yeah, you're a football yeah. fan, and, and, and mm. you understand, and, and you've been in that situation, and you know full well it could have been you. And, and most fans of that era know it could have been them. And that realisation as well, and yeah. you're now a parent, yeah. and... You know, and I've got two daughters, and you yeah, know, you've got and you family, and you just imagine yourself situation. in that situation, and yeah. and not only going through the loss, but going through that, you know, yeah. people being blamed for that loss, and yeah. and, and, and not being treated very well in the morgue, and you know, in fact, not being you know, being treated horrifically in the morgue, and and yeah. all that that sort of adds to it that not just as a football fan or or knowing myself as a kid, and there was also um you know one of the people in the film, you know, his his dad died with him. He, was, he went with his dad. I go to the games with my dad, and I've always gone to the mm. games with my dad. And, mm. and I was just, you know, you, you're picturing that as well. And, mm. it, you know, it's, it's a horrific, it is a horrific story. Yeah. So you, when you're reliving that day in, day out, it, yeah. it has an effect on you. Absolutely does, yes. Um, and the reaction to it, um, what, what reaction did you expect to get? And, and you know, it's pretty landslide. Yeah, and, and we'd had a hint of it because yeah. um, it had been embargoed in the UK for two years, but it had gone out in America. Um, in, in 2014, it went out just as the inquest was starting on the 25th anniversary. And, uh, and I don't, as you know, I don't really do Twitter. I've got a, a Twitter <laughs> account, but I don't do it. Uh, and someone sort of, as it, I was in New York, and, and someone was sort of saying, oh, you want to see what's happening on Twitter? You know, and this mm. was like live as, as it was going out. And I was mm. like, uh, the, the reaction in America was uh, really unbelievable, but they didn't come with any baggage in America because right. they kind of knew something had happened, but yeah. they, there's no sort of... It was quite fresh yeah. to them. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Yeah. the whole story to them. Yeah, fresh, sort of fresh. And, and, yeah. and so we, we knew that it, it could be like that in mm. England, but you're not 100% sure. Um, and then, yeah, it went out in, on the BBC. And, and when, they, when they, um, they did the transmission date, because we were waiting for the inquest to be over, and then we rejigged the end a little bit and, and, and added the, the last bit. So it sort of went over two hours, it was two hours and three minutes. But they put it up against the BAFTAs, which was really, mm. like, for us, it was like, oh, well, what, why are you doing that? Because obviously everyone's going to watch the BAFTAs, but they yeah. didn't. Mm. But and was... that was the amazing thing, that people yeah. sort of didn't go to the BAFTAs, yeah. they went to Hillsborough. Yeah. And then, again, I was watching, like, a Twitter feed and just being quite blown away by people's Reaction. reactions. Because um, it changes, actually. You, you know, you say you sort of start, you're quite emotional mm. to start with. And then you sort of, there's a lot of shock mm. and there's like dismay and you're seeing stuff you don't want to see. And then there's a moment in the film where it just turns to anger. Mm. 
uh, and, and you could see on Twitter yeah. people starting to get really, really I remember angry. that. I remember doing yeah. that myself. And, yeah, and, and, it's, and it, it's an incredible thing to watch that live, you know, live yeah. just, yeah. just going out. You're thinking, oh, people, people are getting it. Because you know what's coming as well. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know yeah exactly. exactly when it's oh, wait, if you're angry now, wait for <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, wait for that. So, Okay, I mean, your production company is called Very Much So Productions. We've <laughs> introduced the lighter note. I must have, I was saying to you before the show, I must have said very much so over a thousand times in my yeah. career because you're handed to by presenters who say, well, it's important that yeah. Sheffield Wednesday get a, a, yeah. a, a result today, isn't it? Yeah, very much, very so, much so, Steve or David. <laughs> or, it's just a cliche. It's a great title yeah. for it. And yeah. Danny's book, um, have you got a working title for this, uh, Danny? Uh, I have, yes. It's um, provisionally called He's One of Our Own. He's when one I was, of our own. Yeah, when I was thinking about a book on, on Chris Wilder, you know, it was only <laughs> probably one of the only few things that he could have possibly Seems been called. You know, nice yeah, it's a kind of song that's followed him, you know, before he came back as a manager. You know, he, he, you know, when you talk about, you know, being part of a club yeah. as fan, ball boy, player, and then manager, you know, you can't get much more of a. <laughs> and so your book is a that. celebration of the the Wilder revival of yeah. uh, Sheffield United. Yeah. Obviously the. League One title track. You can you can look the other way. If you want. You're probably <laughs> not watching to watch it. Uh, and also this is yeah. I'm going to yeah. talk, talk you through it afterwards. <laughs> yeah. so I'm going to talk every, every moment. <laughs> yeah, so your book sales are going to be phenomenal. It, it, even wow. better if uh, if a certain thing happens at the end. Hopefully, of the yeah. Hopefully, it'd be nice. Yeah. We'll talk it off just nicely. So um, I noticed on Twitter that word again. It's very <laughs> useful, by the way, for some things. Danny appealed for some photos of United mm. fans, players, managers during this period yeah. of time and you you've had a response incredible response yeah one of the things i wanted to do was not just show the wilder years through my eyes it was through yeah. the eyes of the supporters what? um as you probably see in there that probably sums it up more than that was that, that that previous one was that from the town hall reception the previous was one was uh, i believe so the day they got promotion oh, right. and they came back to the ground for a few more a few more beers every every dog has his day <laughs> yeah I was yeah. on the uh, on the. We're lucky enough to be on the uh, open top bus. Yeah. And um, everyone got a chant. Even Billy, Billy the dog. <laughs> was <laughs> the guy. The dog. The, yeah. Okay. Well, th those are a few shots, and we'll, yep. we'll we'll in part two we'll come to a few more shots of it. Is this a picture book on Sheffield United, or have you got any work to do? I've got a little bit of work to do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. About. Well, I've got forty thousand more words of work to do. Forty thousand. Yeah. Yes, I so know that's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it's almost a bit of a labour of love because you know it's something that we've lived through, or I've lived through quite closely, sure working too. for the star, so it's kind of, you know, going back and refreshing the memory a little bit, which is enjoyable, really, because, you know, it was good enough the first time, and, you know, in, in sport, it moves on so quickly, almost. It does. That it's almost nice to kind of spend a lot of time looking back at, you know, what's happened and, and what club, it meant to people. When a club hasn't had success for a period of time, it's, all, it's all even more to savour, mm. it's even more special, as mm. that was the case for Sheffield yeah, absolutely. as it was, say, for Cardiff, for Sheffield Wednesday mm. fans. You know these yeah. peaks become higher, don't yeah, they? Yeah, um, yeah. And uh, especially for Chris, I mean, he said that millions of times. You know, the lows are really low, but the highs. Yeah. You know, I, I can't imagine what it must have been to be on the, you know, on the town hall steps and lifting the trophy. You know, of, of your club, like yeah. it must be, it must be incredible for him. But it's just seeing what, what it meant to people who, you know, kind of been through, been through the mill a little bit in terms of the Adkins era. I know it's not as bad as maybe some clubs who have gone to the wall or whatever, but going through that kind of the end of season lap of shame where you know 1500 people stayed behind to mm. to abuse Adkins and then the club was you know on its on its backside really you know and yeah I suppose you know that that kind of sums up the job he's done you can't just look at the job on the pitch you know obviously to to lose if you know be bottom of the league after four games and win the league with 100 points is incredible mm. but the, to kind of get the whole club pulling in one direction as well is you know that kind of sums up the, to the, the job that he's done i think football's about emotion whichever way you yeah. look at it i mean that hillsborough documentary was one extreme that yeah. we don't want to experience ever again but you know on the field of play you know, yeah, it's exactly. pure yeah, emotion yeah. isn't yeah. it yeah quite right and, and he's, he's more emotional than many than yeah many, he's more emotional yeah. he's sometimes tired and emotional as mm. well at chris one it's been known to be he certainly was at the reception the town <laughs> the civic reception the i don't blame him after knowing what <laughs> The, the, uh, the schedule that he had that week of constant it, it wasn't celebrations. No, no, no. He did well to get there, I think. Um, that's part one gone. Would you believe it? That's part one gone. James will join us, and we've got loads more to talk about, including current, uh, the way the two teams are going currently, the Easter programme, which is very busy. So I do hope you can sit back and well, rejoin us in about five minutes' time. We'll see you then.